Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of, well, our first episode of Man vs. Film. My name is Lewis. I'm going to be representing today Lord of the Rings. My name's William today, and I'm going to be representing the best fandom ever, and that's Harry Potter. We'll, we'll debate that now. Um, like, does it need to be? Oh, always. <laughs> come on. What? All right. Do you want to get right. into this straight Oh, up? no, by all means, ladies first. All right, so Lord of the Rings is based off of a book written by Tolkien, and it created such a huge stir that this book was basically the most popular science fiction uh, fantasy novel. Because back then there was sci-fi, but it was not what it is now. And it create, it allowed for those art authors and all that stuff to start up. And after Tolkien released Lord of the Rings, and The Hobbit, and The Cimmerillion, and The Lost Tales, and all the other books that came after the movie series started. There was animated movies in the 70s and 80s, and then there was The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and now, in the next few years, we're going to have a miniseries from Amazon. So, go ahead and your intro. I'm sorry, you're done already? Yeah. Okay, no, that's cool. Um, so, uh, let's see. Harry Potter. Uh, seven books? Yeah. Right. And, and that, was a, that was the first batch, right there. Seven books. Um, then eight movies. Correct. Uh, a play. And not only just a play that opened in London, which has become extremely, extremely popular... But as of March of next year, it is opening on Broadway. And the year after is actually opening <laughs> in New Zealand. Really? Yes, we're taking over everywhere. We'll see about that. And then, oh, and on top of it, let's see, Fantastic Beasts came out. And uh, next year we're getting The Crimes of Grindelwald, which are the first two in a five movie series. So now, quick math, eight and five, hmm, 13 movies, 13 movies, uh, still seven books because we know as a fandom, although the um, Cursed Child did come out, um, it's not really part of the series, it's, you know, afterwards. So uh, a playwright has uh, come out, uh, it has spawned three theme park attractions, uh, three, three sections of theme parks in uh, Orlando, in LA, and Japan. Um, and I believe that the one in Hong Kong, or no, Taiwan, sorry. Uh, there's one in China, somewhere. I'm sorry, where? <laughs> but is uh, it's also has their own little Harry Potter as well. We are still the only ones that have the Hogwarts Express, though, so go Orlando. Really? Yes. Huh, um, I know that. I don't even, I can't even start to fathom how much merchandise it has spawned over the years. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still spawning. True. Like anything and everything you can think of has I mean, a Harry Potter logo. <laughs> you know, wands, wand holsters, yeah. robes, outfits. The cosplay that is, you know, has oh, spawned. Which I'm, I'm not taking away from, you know, Lord of the Rings in this case because I have seen some Lord of the Rings cosplay. So, but. There's a lot of Lord of the Rings. Every convention I've ever gone to. In, com has... in comparison, no, though, no, yeah, I mean, there's... you always see, you know, a couple students, a professor. Oh, we have an entire celebration uh, every January. That is so going to be Tolkien. year five. Um, for Tolkien's yes. birthday, we always have a celebration that's all New Zealand goes up and it's all explosions everywhere. And all the whole country of New Zealand comes out and celebrates because we don't have a theme park, but we have a country. And that whole country is the set for Lord of the Rings and the set that you can explore and explore not only a fake world that's created, but you could actually explore Mother Nature and see the world that Tolkien wanted to create and be one with nature rather than just having an artificially packaged deal by a theme park. 
Yes, I, uh, although we use an entire country as well, United Kingdom, and Edinburgh Castle is actually where they filmed everything outside of uh, Hogwarts. So, uh, you know, us two is our fandom. When I say us, I mean the Potter fandom. Um, have our own country that we can go visit, and there are tours. And on top of it, Warner Brothers opened their own section of Harry Potter in England, uh, which, you know, it's like yeah. the, the backlog tour of Harry Potter. Um, well, you know, which that and going back to the celebration, you guys have, you know, the, the birthday of Tolkien. We have three days in, in Orlando where, you know, the entire world comes in to this celebration. Uh, last year, I've met people from like England, people yeah. from Europe. Uh, there, I think, I believe, also some Australians that I got to meet. So it's, um, it's brought people together, um, on, on different levels. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, I, don't know how deep we're going to get into this but there are people that i know on a personal level that um harry potter basically changed their lives not because you know they're like oh yeah i'm a magician you know i'm a wizard yeah you know it's just the story of harry potter and not even harry potter but even some of the um some of the characters like neville longbottom that, you know, overcame the death of his parents and them being tortured and, you know, people at first were laughing at him and he was the kid that everything bad always happens to. But then as he grows up, he, you know, makes a name for himself. (laughs) You know, and there are kids out there which, you know, school, schools are schools and there's always kids getting bullied and whatnot and they lose themselves in these books and they see that if they persevere, if they keep going, if they keep pushing, there's they're going to be okay yeah and and that's i mean that's that's what creates the fandoms the identifiability of a of a particular book movie or franchise that identifies for a particular person i mean it's supposed to bring people out of their shell and i think tolkien does that as well because one of the main central themes that gandalf is this all-powerful person he is the the mage he is the wisdom of this this whole kingdom and this this world that that Tolkien created and he counts on the most innocent small people to save the kingdom and I think that is such a powerful message these are literally people that they just they wanted to live their life and they're happy with their life living their everyday life but they seek the adventure like every human does and something out of the ordinary but what they didn't know was that they were capable of doing what they were capable of i mean that's the great thing about lord of the rings is that not there's not just one all-powerful person every single person in lord of the rings in the fellowship they all have their own power and they all can stand on their own 100 percent. unless you get shot by arrows and die in the first movie well, but I mean, and that's the other thing. It's like it's very realistic because you actually lose a main character in the first film, right off the bat. You yeah, lose well, a main character in, in Potter, that was you lose badass. His parents within the first ten seconds of like. Yeah, but you don't identify with the parents because this was literally a, it was a scene right at the beginning of the movie. But eventually, you do. Okay, but because then they, you remember, like you know, the, the parents are the ones, or especially you know James Potter, one of the Marauders, and. The, the Marauder's map, which ends up helping Harry. So, and the, the, the way that J.K. wrote these books is like phenomenal. And I want to say, and, and I have read uh, both Lord of the Rings and um, The Hobbit, but the detail that this lady put into the books to where you think it's like, Aww. it's not going to matter or there's no, there's no connection to it. She connects it like, four books later, five books later, and you're like, wow, something that I've been completely, you know, put in the back, and it's like, now I see, like, the connection between, the, like, the, the arc, you yeah, know, but the, the, that comes. If we're going into the writing of the books, there's no comparison to Tolkien and his poetic prose that he writes in, in Lord of the Rings. Um, yes, The Hobbit is a more uh, dumbed-down version. It's a childish version. It's meant for children. But even that... Is more eloquently wrote than written than than the Harry Potter books and the the fandom and the creation myths and everything that Tolkien does there's no comparison to that I remember when the movies came out there's the Harry Potter people 
and then the Lord of the Rings people. Obviously, I was a, I was a huge Lord the of the Rings Potter person. people, and then the people that were wrong. But anyway, so <laughs> I loved Lord of the Rings, and then when Harry Potter came out, I was like, ah, get out of here with that shit. No way. I read the first book, and I was like, ah, what? This, no. This is like kindergarten writing. That's what it felt like. It was like, I, I could pair it straight up with Twilight. That's how bad it is, in my opinion. Oh, we're done. <laughs> we are done. That's it? Nope. <laughs> Twilight. Hey, that is the closest fandom I could think of that, that, um, it's an exaggeration, but I think that that shows the, the level be of... fighting words. That's not an exaggeration. Um... But yeah, the the way that Tolkien write, wrote his his novels and everything, and that's the comparison. These are novels. These are literary masterpieces that Tolkien wrote. They are literally going to be engraved in in literature forever. Also okay. Potter. Look at the the prizes that Lord of the Rings has won. Academy Awards for the movies. Let's concentrate on the movies alone. Just the movies themselves have won over 20 different Academy Awards, including in the last Lord of the Rings installment, the, it won 13 out of the 13 that it was nominated and, and won for. Yeah, but I mean, Marissa took they me were, an Academy Award for my cousin Vinny. I mean, sometimes you get lucky. No, but come on. That, the Lord I'm of the not, Rings I'm movies not gonna, I'm are not take away from literally the way that it's written. It's, it's written exactly and it's portrayed on the screen with an, a sense of elegance that is, is far past anything Harry Potter could present. Well, with, I mean, if you look at it, okay, so they won Academy Awards, which is great, and, you know, congratulations. But cinematography-wise, both of them are like, like you, get the, you get the cinematography of New Zealand in one of them, you get the, the, the not the cinematography, sorry, the, the backgrounds the of New Zealand, yeah. and then you get the backgrounds of England and, and Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland in some cases, and um, the set pieces that were used, like even like the, like the train, the train itself is an actual train that is in Scotland, and but you look um, at the, the effects, the effects. Let's go into the special effects because okay. these movies are heavy on special now, effects. Now, okay, no, now we're gonna have to break them apart. When you said your special effects, I'm I like both practical and digital. The practical ones were were good in both of them. The digital one, the first like the first trilogy of them was was really good. The second trilogy, like we're talking Hobbit, it looked like it got thrown like you could feel heart in the first trilogy. Yes. You could feel that Agreed. whoever worked on it was like this is going to be my masterpiece. like it's my movie. Everything is great, down to like it, it didn't matter how insane the scene was, like Legolas coming down the trunk of the elephant and I mean landing. That's and, what I'm and, talking and about. And Gimli just going, "Oh, that only counts as one," <laughs> you know. And that was that's great. The great thing about Lord of the Rings: it has humor, it has action, it has drama, it has romance, it has so that's everything. Everything, everything, that you everything you just imagine. listed. Everything you just listed. Potter has though, and it's done excellently, masterfully. Now let's talk Hobbit. That's the problem. Hobbit. Harry Potter does not. What? Have it's magic? Not, no, it's not. I'm like all things about magic. No. <laughs> it's not the effects in the first four, especially the first four Harry Potters are atrocious when it comes to the special effects. And then let's not even go into the acting of the first two. The first okay. two were ridiculous. first off. Okay, so all right, so let's let's pause right there because we wouldn't go off into completely different tangents and never come <laughs> back to the actual point. The Hobbit, the CGI of the Hobbit. The dragon looked great in the, in the second one. Okay, well, the the defamation or the, the something of smog yeah. or smoke or whatever it is. Smog. Smog. Um, but then, and like, like anybody that has seen it will probably bring it up. Like that scene where Legolas is like jumping on the falling bricks and, and basically defying gravity. I mean, that's... Uh, and again, and the CGI the on that is as well. For it's like... Children, this is the closest Lord of the Rings will get to Harry Potter. Going down to the level of, oh, of the special go, effects going and back everything to that, story wise. I completely forgot to make that point. Um, yes, Tolkien wrote the way that he wrote, which is great. But the way that J.K. also wrote, she wrote so that anybody on any reading level 
that English may not even be their first language. It is basic be, by comparison to Tolkien because so everybody can enjoy it. I read the, uh, the Hobbit when I was in seventh grade, but I was living overseas. English was not my first language. Yeah. I was speaking Italian at home. I was living in a French-speaking country. I was learning English at school, so I had all this different... And it was so intricate and so, like... Like, the words were, like, you know, not basic that it, it took so much away, and I hated it. Because every other word, I had to sit there and go through a dictionary because I did not know what the meaning was. And it just felt like it was... When I read J.K. Rowling, although, yes, English was already more of a fluent language for me, I breezed through it. I understood what I was reading. It made it so... And that's, for me... But that's not... As, as, a, as, a, as an author, like, not that I am an author, but I'm saying if I was an author, I would much rather maybe, like you say, dumb it down a little bit, but know that every person on any level and walk of life will be able to pick up my book and go, I can read this. That's Whereas the thing, though, it's like Tolkien was translated into pretty much more languages than anything any other book known to man other than the Bible. Well, give it time though, because Tolkien has been around a lot longer than Potter. But also, so, but Potter is already now, like any country that you go in, just about any country that you go in nowadays. Yeah, if you walk into a bookstore, chances are you'll find Potter in that language. Okay, the, but, you know, I've seen it in French, I've seen it in English, I've seen it, you know, obviously in English. Yeah. I've seen it in Italian. I've seen it, you know, in, in, in a lot Spanish. of different countries. Yeah, so I, I agree. But I, I'm talking about like th this is the the fandoms are there's no comparison. The Harry Potter fandom is a lot more massive, and the reason why I think is that it's a newer book. It's only been around for what 20 years. Uh, yeah, 96. Yeah, 20 years. Uh, 21 years. I believe. 21 years has been around. Tolkien's been around since the 30s. The Hobbit was written out in the 30s. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this, this is a book that's been around for close to, to 90 years. It, it's a big difference. So, this is a book that, yes, it it was it was not surpassed until the 90s as the highest grossing book of all time besides the Bible. And, I mean, that tells you the type of, of like, connection it has. And if you want to go into the video games and everything else that spawned, Harry Potter has a more active fandom. But Lord of the Rings has a more uh, held back, restrained fandom. They are they stay in their basements, they stay in their homes, and they watch the films. They go out in droves to watch the films. If you if you want to compare the the box office grosses of the movies, and this uh, the reason I want to go into the box office grosses is because it shows you the type of frenzy that the fandom has. All right, the the what do you call it? The Lord of the Rings trilogy did two point nine billion dollars. The Hobbit trilogy did 2.9 billion dollars, and then if you compare all the Harry Potter uh, movies, it's about 2.7 billion, all eight movies, and that tells you the type of of what do you call it, like actual fandom there is. Because yeah, they're not active as Harry Potter, but they're there and they're massive. It okay, but and and I would have to. And that's not adjusted for inflation, by the way. Um, the turnaround fandom for Harry Potter is at a much bigger level than Lord of the Rings. You know, and even now that, you know, with the new Fantastic Beasts series that is coming out, the, the kids that were watching Harry Potter when they were coming out are now the adults that are bringing their kids. Yeah, that's true. To, to bring... To, to, to bring uh, to the you know to the new world of Harry Potter, the prequels, if you want to call them that. Yeah. Um, and and Which, again, the way that she's going to tie in five prequel movies into the seven yeah. original stories. Let's see how that works. Now. Let's see. Let's see how it works. But I mean, she's already she's already doing it because in the next movie. Uh, Dumbledore's going to be in it already. Grindelwald's going to be in it. Uh, Newt Scamander, if you actually look in um, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, I want to say, in the end credits, when there's like the maps, 
you see Newt's commander yeah, that's that. walking around the halls. So even before she came out with this, this is what I mean when JK's like, she's thinking like 15 steps ahead. Either she that could, or she, she just grabbed the character <clears throat> name from, from the Harry Potter. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that's the... You can't, you can't analyze those because even Tolkien did the same thing with his series and all that. I mean, if you want to go into that, the mythology creation, full creation myth, mythology of Middle Earth. And then also on top of that, he created like languages, full languages, written, um, spoken, and grammatical, like three different languages completely from scratch. Well, I mean, if and you want to go into that, that and I'll give him that. They, you know, the counterpoint is that in in I mean, he was a in the world of Harry Potter. That's what he was. <laughs> out of the parcel tongue, there really isn't any other language yeah. to really be yeah. spoken. You know, even. The, the centaurs in the Forbidden Forest, they communicate, you know, in English. But, um, but I mean, like, I, I will give him that, that, you know, it's never easy to create a language, let alone three. And how about the and, villains? Huh? How about the villains? Okay. Um, the villains in yours are very clear-cut. You have, you know, you have the bad guys, you have the Do orcs. You? They are. There, there's, there's... There's a lot of... It, that's what I like about it is that it has a lot of human traits in it. Look at the at uh, uh, Theoden. They're they're flawed individuals. They're all flawed. Every person in Middle Earth has a human trait to him, has a, a humanistic approach to it. That they're all flawed individuals. They have they can all be turned to the dark side, and to to Sauron's will, if you want. And they all are grounded. In the laws of, of physics, I mean, it, I mean, they're they're real characters and they're identifiable characters yeah. because of their flaws. Look at uh, Saruman. Saruman turned. He was a wizard, uh, like Gandalf and, and like all the other wizards, ha Habergas and, and all these guys. But look at what happens to him. He turns because Sauron uh, captured him and took his soul. And that's, but that's what Voldemort did with hundreds of people, and that's why you get the Death Eaters. Um, for those who can't see. Death Eaters <laughs> remind me of um, <coughs> uh, Ring Race. <laughs> and that's the other thing. The cinematic universe is, is very well done. I, when I was looking at the, at the, what do you call it, the clips and stuff like that, trying to put together the intro for this, the first thing that I saw... There was no major Harry Potter battles that you could compare to Lord of the Rings. It was like, wow. Even the end of Deathly Hollows, I was like, no. There's that scene where the Rohan, the 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 writers of Rohan are coming over that hill, and that speech that Theoden gives, the the our our shields will shatter. Ah, oh, this will be a, a red day. Ah. Oh, that thing, it gave me goosebumps listening to that speech. I couldn't find that in Harry Potter. Even watching the movies, I was never that enthralled. And I gave it its chance. And I enjoyed the Harry Potter movies. But there was no comparison at the epicness of, of Lord of the Rings. And the comparison of seeing every film has those epic scenes, if not more than that. That scene where Gandalf comes over the, the ridge of uh of Helm's Deep. Oh that scene where the, the just the light just goes zhoo. oh and then seeing the the, the ring rapes on wings over the swamps mm -hmm. that scene in theaters that it's just thundering shaking the ground sound and that 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 squeal that that uh, Gollum gives off oh it is something that there is no comparison to. We have to. our own Gollum. We call him Peter Pettigrew. <laughs> and there you go. Gollum. The special effects that were in play to play Gollum and get those facial recognitions. Uh, special effects to modern special effects are due a lot in part to the development that, that Lord of the Rings did. That's how, the type of influence. This is the type of film that will be taught in cinema classes for all eternity. This will be up there with Citizen Kane. This will be up there with Jurassic Park. This will be up there with every major film ever made. This is going to be stuck in the in the, the history of cinema forever. 
because of its masterpiece. And then the books did the same thing for their time. Yes, Harry Potter has its, its market now. It has its fandom now. And it is a great mythology. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna lie to you, I do enjoy the mythology and I enjoy participating in the mythology behind it. But um, Lord of the Rings, by far, in my opinion, it outweighs. It, and he got, every movie was like, you know, two years apart or something like that, to where we had time yeah. to fester on it and, and build stuff and say, oh my God, and speculate. But we had to wait. A decade, if not more, for all these movies. Whereas well, Lord of the Rings, it was, for the movie you know, when it was announced. one, two, three. It got announced in, in 95. 95 yeah. was when they announced it. And I was like, itching. I, I felt like a fiend by, by 2001. And I was like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Where's the... You know, it's like, come on, dude. I grew up a lot of looking at Lord of the Rings movies, the animated movies, when I was a kid. I grew up with that. As soon as I came uh, up to a certain age, my dad gave me that book and here, read it. I fell in love with the the way that it was written. But it's like the fact that that Tolkien was never about excluding any fandom. And yeah, I, I give you my little spurts here and there about Harry Potter and all that stuff. But the fact is, is that Lord of the Rings gave way to every fantasy film that we know modern modern times was all original ideas because he stole a lot of the ideas from uh, King Arthur and the, the Round Table, Knights of the Round Table, and a lot of uh, what he called English mythology that was already there. He grabbed that and made it his own. Yeah. And he created creatures just like uh, J.K. did with, with all the creatures that she created. But, I mean, Tolkien, the world that he created, I will always love and hold dear in my heart. And the fact is, it's the same reason that you hold Harry Potter and that's why we're doing this comparison yeah. because all in all I think that they're the two fandoms are a lot closer than anybody will ever acknowledge oh no they are it's kind of, kind of it's like saying Star Wars and Star Trek the core of of every mythology or yeah. religion it's good it, it's pretty much the same it's then how you expand it and make yeah. your own which you know granted I, I, Granted, we're not at war with each other like you know some religions are, but um, I think that one advantage, one major advantage that uh, the Potter fandom has, or even the Potter uh, um, lore has over your Lord of the Rings, is that um, like I said, a the turnaround fandom that you know yeah. the, w w when we were once kids are now teaching our kids and showing them you know the the, the, the letter to Hogwarts and the, and everything else, but. There's always something new coming out, which keeps the fandom fresh. Yeah. You know, like when kids are finally growing up and they read the, the novels or they read the books and then they watch the movies and they want more. Whereas until your show comes out, you reached oh, a stump. Tolkien has had that same type of fervor. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons is based off of Lord of the Rings and the adventures of Lord of the Rings. And that was, that in its low, alone was a fervor that was crazy for 20 years plus i mean that was literally everybody in their basement was playing lord of the rings if you want to if you want to be specific and the thing is like jk keeps stuff to herself until the very end and like if you look at it when they were doing the um uh the movie junkets for um fantastic beasts they uh, i want to say they were in england and, and i like that they didn't the, the actors like didn't even know and she comes on stage and she's like, actually, no, sorry. There was Eddie Redmayne. Uh, there was like the, the main characters that was, you know, sitting on stage in L.A. talking to the fans. And she actually videoed from England with um, Fur, uh, uh, not William Farrell. Uh, who's the other one? Uh, well, Farrell, but not um, not the funny one, the serious one. Oh, wow, it, it's and, it's really I mean, one of those days. That's um, the difference between. And she sits that, there. And she was like, "Okay, we tell them now." And you're like, "Okay." He's like, "Yeah, sure." And you could look in his face that it's like, "I don't care because I'm not in them, so I couldn't <laughs> care less." And she goes like, "Yeah, we're not doing three movies like I told everybody. We're doing five. <laughs> Nobody knew this. If you look at the faces of like Eddie Redmayne and, and everybody else that was on stage, they're like, like they're happy, surprised, but they're like." Like she wants those genuine 
like reactions. Respond, reactions. Uh, a big one is in the first movie, uh, uh, Sorcerer's Stone, when you see the kids coming into the Great Hall, and they're all looking around, they're mesmerized. That is a real reaction. They were not. They had not seen that set. They were not told what it was going to be. They were not told anything. They were just told, "I'm going to walk into the Great Hall." That's it. And then they said, "Okay, action!" And that that shot was that first shot, and you see the look on their face because it's like, "Oh my God!" Like, and 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 as a fan, and as somebody as you're watching it also for the first time, especially if you got to see it on the big screen, yeah. you have that same child reaction to it. It's like. Oh my god, like this is beautiful. This is like amazing. See, even Dan that Fogler, all, there's that one. Dan Fogler, thank you. You see, that's your all moments. That's your Jurassic Park seeing the Bronchiosaurus. That's your 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 Minas Tirith attack. That I didn't have that with the Harry Potter movies. I didn't I, I was like, oh that's cool. That was my reaction. And that was probably your reaction to the King's speech in Lord of the Rings, because it didn't identify with you. It didn't give you that oomph like Harry Potter did. Well, the the reason why it didn't like it it, it, it did kind of like it, it's well written and it's well acted. Not taking away from that, the reason why it didn't really resound with me is because you watch a war movie. There's gonna be that speech. Uh, for example, like, oh, a big one. It was so Braveheart. beautifully done. Braveheart, uh, Braveheart has yeah. it. You yeah. know. Uh, yeah. They can take our lives, but they'll never take our freedoms. Yeah. When you see that pull okay. up, and you see all oh, the massive army of horses, and you're like, oh, shit. And you just saw the, the siege empire that, that, that uh, uh, what do you call it, Mordor unleashed on Minas Tirith, uh, which you... Minas Tirith in itself is such an epic beautiful landscape i will give you the like oh. the one big moment that, yeah, that to me I, like, like, like had you kind of like your reaction to where i was like was the moment where legolas um on uh, gimli and um who's the ranger uh oh, aragon aragon jump out of the boat this, this we're yeah. talking like yeah. uh, uh, the third movie at this point and you think that it's just three of them, and they start charging, <laughs> and the army of the dead just comes out of nowhere. That gave me that more like that moment where it's like, oh my god, that's so great. But it was also more like, you're about to get your asses kicked. That's great. Here we go. And you see them just spread out through like the city and everything. Yeah. It's like this green mist. Um, <clears throat> oh, but and, and, and that was great. Yeah. Um, kind of like you know in the moment when Harry Potter where they're building like the, this big cocoon over the castle. Uh, in that was pretty to, epic. Yeah. To where you know and McGonagall's like oh I want I, when she uh, wakes up the uh, the stone guards. She's yeah. like I always wanted to do that spell and okay. it's like and 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 when you when you get somebody like but then he just goes McGonagall and it falls apart which was pretty awesome the way it falls apart but I was like really that's it. All that work for bling, and it's done. And yeah, it cracks his wand, but it's like. <laughs> well, you also have to. It remember, was so anticlimactic. The you have to remember, the way that the movie ended, is not how the book ends. That was it another just felt like big a thing. Tease. That, 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 that was like, like a, a big. Tease. That, that was, was like, like big, and into this day, it's like a big. You you want to get a fandom riled up? That's one of them. The other one is in the fourth one where um, Harry Potter is he, he got his name got picked in the um, uh, for the tournament and um, now I want to say Gandalf it's not Gandalf I'm gonna get lynched <laughs> for this Dumbledore comes running down and he grabs Success. it and he goes like he goes did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire in the book it's and it's hey you'll see it on Tumblr you see it everywhere he said calmly. Lord in, of the Rings has theirs. In, in, uh, Lord of the Rings sure, has sure theirs. I do. Like, um, I'm, I'm freaking the, the, <clears throat> the stupid bitch that will go nameless um, taking away the scene that was supposed to be done by Glorfindel. That scene where they're out running the, the what do you call it, the Nazgul and with the, the wounded um, Frodo. Frodo. And oh, Liv Tyler? Yeah. Oh, that well, wait, what happened? Like, what... I, I, it wasn't it's, supposed it's, to be her. It's been a while. She is supposed. To, she's such a minor character that she's not in the Lord of the Rings, other than maybe one or two sentences. She's all appendix. 
character. Okay. That's all she is. So who was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be Glorfindel. I, I mean, let's let's conclude with Lord I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lord of the Rings. I think I hold it dear to my heart because of the way I was raised. I was grown. I grew up with it, and I honestly think that I connect with that particular fandom more because of that. I do enjoy the Harry Potter movies. I will never read the books though. I read the first one. I didn't enjoy it. Did you read Twilight though? Yeah. Oh, sure. He'll read Twilight, but he won't read Harry Potter. Okay. I read that Twilight explains and... everything. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But go ahead. Um, I mean, I will. I will always be a, a much better, a much bigger uh, Potter fan and Potter pothead. If you put it that way, yeah, Potter Potterhead. Um, because I mean, if you just look at the fandom that there is and how many lives that has changed, but also speaking personally. It taught me, and and it was through this specific fandom that I learned that even it doesn't matter how young or how old you are, you can let your imagination run wild and let it run loose. And I've met people that from that have kids from one two you know, years that are one two years old to be grandparents in their sixties, seventies, eighties, and it's taught me it doesn't matter. And, prevail and, and push and you will prevail never give up never be pushed down you know when you think chips are down you don't stay step down away from get back up jumping back up you yeah. know what I mean just just keep going keep going which I, which I know Lord of the Rings has I, like that saying but I think that's what the every connection was does. made on this side whereas yeah. Yeah. And, and it was also more enjoyable in the sense of it's not as dark like it gets dark towards the end yeah but this is stay, this is dark from the beginning yeah. You know what I mean? And there's a lot more death and there's a and and the reason why I also believe is because this is more family friendly from the pers- from point of view where two year olds can watch Harry Potter yeah. and be happy. And where I would I don't think that even you would show a two year old <laughs> no. sit down here, let's watch Lord of the Rings yeah, and no. now have a good night night. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> that Balrog scene alone just Right? Daddy, I can't. <laughs> can't sleep. Balrog <laughs> <to> eat me. <laughs> So, I mean, in conclusion, I think, honestly, what I think that this show is meant to do is meant to show the appreciation that each of us have for a particular fandom. Even though our both fandoms are pretty similar, they have the same type of fantasy uh, aspects, they have the same type of aspects that it actually encourages you to rise up and, and lift your soul every time you read the book or watch the movie or fall into each of these characters whichever way you might enjoy doing it, whether it be in the video games, movies, books, whatever the case is, it's across every platform, and I think it identifies with a huge mass audience, and I think that's what we're trying to do in this, try to show you the different aspects of each of the the fandoms. There's, so, there's a place for everybody. Exactly. In either one, even in Potter, you have the four houses, and each house yeah. has a different and personality. And I think that was freaking awesome. Which was great on her part, because yeah. literally that's her way of showing, of telling you where it's like, if you don't believe, if you don't think that you fall into this house, there's three other houses that yeah. you will probably find yourself into, unless you know you just become a straight up death eater. And even then, there's place for you there. Yeah. And 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 that's one of the great things yeah. about JK's books and JK's fandom in the world, where it's like there literally is a place for everyone. Nobody is cast aside. Exactly. Everybody. And the same thing with Lord of the Rings. So. Um, my name is Lewis, and I was representing Lord of the Rings today because, yeah. My name's Will, and I was representing the Potter fandom, Death Eaters Forever. And um, this is Man vs. Film, just doing the fandoms of Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter today. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys were able to check us out for another episode. Yeah.